Hi YouTube, Darth here. In today's basic field, I'm going to walk you through all the basics of armored warfare. Every now and again, I get an enemy that throws a grenade at my tank, hoping for something to happen, which tells me that there might be a few of you that would benefit from this information. When I'm talking about armored warfare, I'm talking about the big guns, the tanks and the infantry fighting vehicles. In this video guide, I'm going to walk you through some of the basic tactics, strategies, and decisions that should help you be a much more effective player when using and fighting against armor in Battlefield 4. In Battlefield 4, there are two main categories of armored vehicles, the main battle tanks and the infantry fighting vehicles. Each faction has their own flavor of vehicles with their own benefits and detractions. I won't get into the specifics of each faction's vehicle in this video, but I do want to talk about the difference between the main battle tanks and the infantry fighting vehicles. The MBT is a battlefield monster whose specialty is taking out other vehicles, particularly armored vehicles. The powerful main cannon has the best range damage of the armored vehicles. Combine this with the secondary gunner position and you've got a vehicle that is more than capable against other armored targets and infantry. The front and side armor of the tank is incredibly durable, giving it more lasting power than any other vehicle in the game. From most projectiles, it can absorb up to 5 hits on its front armor, 3 direct hits on its sides, and only 2 in the rear. So it's important to point the front of this rolling battleship towards the enemy at all times. The IFV is a heavily armored transport that is great for taking out infantry and well suited for taking on armored vehicles as well. While not possessing the same effective range as the tank, it can be just as deadly in an anti-armor role at close range. The armor of the IFV is equalized throughout the vehicle, so positioning matters less than the tank, but overall the IFV is generally less forgiving of damage taken. It can only take roughly 2-3 direct hits from most projectiles on each of its sides. To make up for that, the IFV has a wide arsenal of weapons available to it. The driver can specialize the vehicle in both the anti-armor and anti-infantry roles by substituting different vehicle loadouts. The Zuni rockets provide some of the best knife fight damage in the game, while the tow missile gives the IFV great reach. And in addition to a secondary gunner, the vehicle can also carry up to four allies. Take that combat load and combine it with the fact that the IFV is also mildly faster than the tank, and this makes it very effective for capturing points quickly. The IFV also has the distinct advantage of being a vehicle that can go on land and water. This can be used to get around to areas that armor might not otherwise be able to, which is yet another advantage you can use in finding the perfect position. Now that you know the basics of the armored vehicles, I want to talk about one of the most important aspects of armored warfare, and that's positioning. Particularly, I want to talk about how positioning affects damage. During an armored skirmish, where an armored vehicle gets hit and at what angle will vastly affect the outcome of the skirmish. In Battlefield 4, the three main parts of any armored vehicle you should be concerned about are the front, side, and rear. In a tank, the front and sides take far reduced damage and the rear takes significantly increased damage, while the infantry fighting vehicle takes equal damage from all three sides. However, and this is important, something that is true of both vehicles is that the angle of attack makes a huge difference in the amount of damage dealt. For example, on the rear of a defending tank, an HE shell from an attacking tank will do 67% damage if it's landed directly on target. This means that the attacking tank shell is fired directly at a 90 degree angle at the defending tank. But, as that angle of attack increases, you can see that the damage vastly decreases. What was 67% damage is reduced to merely 25% damage. This is a huge difference for more than numerical reasons, as damage done over 39% immobilizes an armored vehicle and damage over 29% slows it significantly, and a slowed or disabled armored vehicle is a sitting duck. Again, for tanks, the side you're attacking matters. For IFVs, it doesn't matter because the damage is normalized between all four sides. However, on both vehicles, the angle of attack matters. What this means is that your positioning in a combat situation can determine the winner between the two armored vehicles. It can also mean the difference between taking 42% damage from an RPG and just 21%. One good rule is that on both vehicles you want to try and orient the front corners of your vehicle at the enemy. This increases the angle of attack enough so that their projectile does minimum damage to you. On a tank, this can increase survivability on side shots from 3 hits to 5. In a tank on tank skirmish, a frontal attack is simply going to come down to who is doing more damage per second and who shot first. Being the first to attack in any skirmish is important, as this initiative will often decide who wins the skirmish in many coin flip circumstances. However, a smart driver who positions themselves correctly against another tank can quickly inflict a lot more damage than one who is not positioned correctly. 
Getting shots in as directly as possible and on the best side possible is critical in armored skirmishes. When attacking an IFV, the choice in side doesn't matter, but the angle of attack still plays a critical role. Something important to keep in mind is that all this damage modification also applies to hand-guided infantry-based weapons. So if you're an engineer attacking an armored vehicle, or an armored vehicle defending from attacks, you'll want to consider positioning as a key element to maximizing or minimizing your damage, whatever the case may be. In summary, positioning can cost you or win you the battle. When thinking about how you're going to attack your enemies, or defend from them, always choose the best angles and how you position yourself against an enemy. The next most important lesson you can learn about armored warfare is teamwork. Now I've already made a video about teamwork, but teamwork in an armored vehicle is all about keeping your vehicle alive and keeping it number one on the battlefield. Both the IFV and the tank have a driver position and a secondary gunner position. Ideally, any armored vehicle should be crewed by two individuals as it increases the effectiveness of the armored vehicle substantially. If you see a tank running by itself, do the driver a favor and hop in. Additionally, one or more of the crew should be an engineer with a repair torch equipped. Rockets are optional, but can also provide a significant boost in crunch times. Now let's go over some of the ground rules for successfully operating a vehicle with a teammate. First, one of you must be in the vehicle at all times. If you both get out in order to repair the vehicle in combat, the chances of your vehicle being stolen increase from zero to absolute metaphysical certainty. Secondly, if you're in the gunner position, your job is to protect the vehicle from incoming infantry. With this in mind, it's best practice to face in the opposite direction as your driver is aiming and shooting. You can find this information on your HUD. Trust the driver to handle their situation, and you handle the infantry in your direction. Sometimes you'll need to have your head on a swivel when the threats are all around you. Nobody wants to be killed by C4 just because the gunner was greedy or wasn't paying attention. Also, as a gunner, you can't destroy enemy armored vehicles with your marshmallow shooter, so don't bother with that. Light-skinned vehicles and aircraft, however, are fair game. Shooting at nothing is right out. It gives away your position on the map, and it will cause you to get targeted by anything hunting armor. As a final rule, communicate whenever possible. This is easier if you're in voice communication with your fellow crew member. If you can't be in direct communication, make the best of it or swap to their squad for VOIP. Now with the rules out of the way, communication really is key to a good two-man crew. Call out when threats appear, especially other Ocean armored rear. vehicles. God, if right. you see a support right. running at you, chances are that they have C4 and that they mean to blow you up or kamikaze yeah, in the process. You if you're the gunner, make sure the driver knows about these threats. Right. If you're the driver, be sure to call out targets that the gunner can handle or should be aware of. For example, infantry charging at you, engineers, or enemies that are thick in an area or on a rooftop. When you enter a skirmish with another armored vehicle and need to be repaired, be sure to call out who is exiting the vehicle to do any repairs. If you are a gunner exiting the vehicle and can spare a moment, help out your driver by shooting a rocket at any attacking enemy vehicle. It really can make a big difference. Then get to your repairs. Remember to stick to the side of the vehicle that isn't being shot at. If you're on normal mode, you can get behind your vehicle and have your driver push you around while you repair. On hardcore, be careful not to get in your vehicle's way while repairing as you will likely be squished by its movements. As a driver, if you need to move, be sure to communicate this to your teammate if he left the vehicle or is considering getting out. Ideally, as the driver, you'll be specifically calling for repairs as you are the captain of the vehicle. If you're not in communication, I suggest the following general principle. In an armored vehicle versus armored vehicle skirmish, I recommend the gunner getting out to repair. He's going to do the least good staying in his position. If your attackers are mainly infantry, getting out puts you at substantial risk of being raked by gunfire. So it's probably better to drive to a safe position if possible. Ideally, the driver would only ever get out if the vehicle is perfectly safe and the gunner merely keeps the vehicle safe from any surprise infantry threats. Finally, the crew should be working to make the team's job easier. Ah. If there is an enemy tank that is racking up kills, it should be a priority target. Honestly, any enemy armor should be a priority target with your armor, assuming you're appropriately set up in your loadout to handle it. Just because you're in a vehicle doesn't mean you can give up on taking points. But if you're alone, without any teammates as supporting infantry, keep in mind that you're the only target for enemies in the area that are defending. It's always better to assault a point with teammates. Ultimately, the more used to working with each other a crew is, the better they will be. And the better they communicate, the more effective their armored vehicle will be. And the more that that armored vehicle works towards the goals of the overall team, the better off the vehicle and the team will be. Defensive driving isn't only for the driver's ed classroom and your insurance adjuster. It's a good way to keep your armor alive and continue blowing your enemies to tiny bits. 
So let's look at the extreme opposite example first. Let's say you're an armored vehicle and you floor the gas on that vehicle into the middle of the enemy team looking for some kills. You might get one or two, but what you've also done is expose yourself to fire from every angle. If you remember from earlier in this video, you'll know why giving your enemy the best angles of attack is bad. No gunner or repairing teammate can save you from this bad decision. Instead, work with your team to capture points or consider approaches that will lead you into engagement range with enemy armor. Just like on foot, flanking enemy armor pays off quite significantly. Now, unless you're particularly sneaky, you're going to be taking damage during a skirmish. Firstly, you should be working to minimize the amount of damage you're taking by facing your vehicle towards your attacker. If you can, try to point the vehicle at an angle that reduces the damage to a minimal amount. As you take damage, you have a few choices to make about the amount of damage your vehicle is taking. If you think you can win the engagement, you should stay and fight. But if you're taking enough damage quickly enough, it's probably time to back away and find cover. When is it time to retreat? It comes down to doing some simple math in your head. If the next enemy's shots would kill you, you probably should have already started to retreat. Keep an eye on the minimap while you make your way out of the situation. Remember that you'll want to keep your strongest sides pointed at your threat while you back away. You definitely do not want to turn around and show the enemy your rear. If you've got a teammate that can repair you, let them do their work and continue to fight on. This can often be enough to survive a skirmish with a vehicle that is not being repaired. Sometimes your teammate is repairing you, but you're not going to survive if you stay in one place. Unfortunately, if they can't jump back in before you have to go, they're going to have to be sacrificed in order to preserve the armored vehicle. Unless you're on an instant vehicle respawn server, it's going to be much faster for your teammate to respawn than your vehicle. Always be aware of where you can retreat to. On maps with a lot of building cover like Dawnbreaker and Siege of Shanghai, using the buildings as an easy go-to cover is very helpful. One effective tactic you can use is to pillar your enemies, or simply alternating shooting and staying behind cover while your next shell reloads. You want to try and time your pillar defensive maneuvers to when your enemy is shooting or is about to shoot to get the maximum effect from your cover. For bonus points, try to work the angle of your vehicle so that any shots that do land have a minimum effect on your armored vehicle. You don't want to give an enemy a clear shot at your broadside. Finally, always be aware of where your enemies are. It's a huge benefit to open your map during an idle moment and see where the enemy vehicles are located. If they're spotted, you may even be able to take them by surprise. I like to keep the map open on a second monitor just so I can assess the threats at all times, but you may not have that luxury. I've covered most of the ways that you can drive your armored vehicle to safety, and now I want to cover some more special case tactics. Something you might not immediately pick up on in Battlefield 4 is wherever you are looking in a vehicle is where you will be exiting at when you get out. So if you're driving a tank or infantry fighting vehicle, rotate your turret to the direction you want to get out at. This can be the difference between getting out and safely repairing your vehicle, versus taking a tank shell to the face. This is particularly important if you're the gunner and you're repairing your driver in the middle of combat. One of the things you're going to encounter in Battlefield 4 is lock-on weapons. There's two primary ways you can deal with this threat. First, you can find the threat by looking at your HUD and finding the direction that the threat is coming from, and then shoot them in the face. This will break the lock and send their weapon harmlessly spiraling away from you. Second, you can use the same technique to put cover between yourself and whatever is locking onto you. Both methods are relatively effective at stopping weapons that are simply locking onto you, but finding nearby tall, emphasis on tall, cover is the most effective way at stopping weapons that are already in flight. Of course, if you have IR smoke or smoke screen equipped, this can help to dissipate attacks from lock-on weapons. If you're taking a point without backup on a non-hardcore server, it can be effective to go to the third-person camera to get a better view of the battlefield around your entire vehicle. On PC, by default, you can do this by pressing the C, as in Charlie key. On consoles, this is accomplished by pressing the right analog stick. You still have to look around to make sure that the coast is clear, but your view is much improved from the typical first-person camera. If you've got the active protection countermeasure unlocked, timing your usage of the countermeasure is crucial. First, the easiest advice to give is that if you ever see a tank point its barrel at you, it's time to turn on the APS. You'll block at least the first shot, which will probably be enough to win the skirmish, even if they turn on their own APS. Second, if you're taking damage from multiple sources at the same time, it's probably time to turn on the APS and back away to a spot in cover so that you can repair. You can use this time to consider how to better approach the target the next time you attack. Finally, one of the most common uses I have on maps with wide open spaces and lots of air cover is to time it for countering lock-on missiles from aircraft. 
you will want to spot the missiles and activate the APS just before the missiles land. This will give you protection from the missiles and any immediate follow-up shots, for example, from the cannon on an attack jet. One very situational bit of defensive advice is to use the commander crate. When you're next to a crate, your vehicle will start repairing immediately, and it will instantly begin to replenish ammo. This can give you a very serious winning edge in an otherwise even skirmish. One of the most common mistakes I see players make is to exit an armored vehicle near enemies with plenty of health still left in it. What happens is that the player will likely be killed and the armored vehicle will be stolen by a quick thinking enemy. This is why it's essential that only one teammate exit a two-man vehicle and why you should always take the death in the tank rather than risk handing it over to the enemy. An enemy getting their hands on armor from your spawn is a huge swing in the game in their favor. Dominating the battlefield and getting huge kill-to-death ratios in an armored vehicle is a relatively simple task if you take a couple of lessons from this video away with you. Let's do a quick review of everything I've covered. First, know your armored vehicle. Tanks are good for attacking other armored vehicles, particularly at medium and longer ranges. They also have the most to gain from positioning. IFVs have better infantry fighting capability and are very dangerous in close quarters, but are a little more fragile than a tank. Second, positioning is critical in skirmishes. Always keep your tank's front pointing at the enemy, and look for ways to minimize incoming damage while maximizing your damage against the enemy. Third, teamwork is essential. An armored vehicle with a crew and repairs is going to defeat one without in just about every circumstance. Fourth, drive defensively. Make sure you know where your cover is and where your exits are. Leave a losing battle and repair. Finally, I went over several tips for increasing your survivability in special circumstances. If I can give you one bit of extra advice, pick a loadout that maximizes your damage and minimizes your damage taken. But loadouts are a whole different topic for a whole other day. If you're new to Armored Warfare, I suggest you practice the techniques of positioning and being defensive with your vehicle. Simply preserving your vehicle to fight again another day is a critical aspect of being a good tank driver. Thanks for watching, YouTube. If you found this video helpful or insightful, please click like. If you'd like to see more Battlefield videos, please subscribe to my channel. If you have something you'd like me to cover in a future Basic Field video, please mention that in the comments below. And I'll see you next time, YouTube.